Hello and welcome to Newgrange. We're part of the monument that doesn't attract a huge amount of attention. We're at the rear of it and a particular fine piece of Neolithic art here. Now we're joined by Marisha Sullivan who is a professor of archaeology from UCD and a specialist in Neolithic art. Tell me Marisha, can you explain what exactly we're looking at here? Uh, we're looking at Kerbstone 52 which is the stone directly across the mound from the entrance stone and uh, it's a stone that not everyone sees, the people don't always come around, but many do. Um, and as you can see, the artwork on this stone is divided up. Uh, it's really in two halves. Uh, and on this half, uh, you can see that this half itself is then divided into two further halves. The upper part, which has a rounded sort of a curvilinear surface, is decorated with curvilinear motifs. And then down below, where the surface is flatter, it's decorated with a sort of a rectilinear type of design. And then over on the other side, uh, where you have natural cut marks uh, in the stone, they have taken advantage of these to develop the artwork around them. Now the reason I focus on that is to make the point that in the middle here, there is a vertical line, which has always been well known by archaeologists, quite broad here, that goes down the middle of the stone and divides up, divides the two parts of the stone from each other. Uh, the interest about that is that there is an equivalent line on the entrance stone uh, at the entrance to the tomb on the other side of the mound and if you essentially drew a line across from one of these lines to the other you're effectively on the solstice alignment. We know that that's, a, uh, you know, that that's deliberate because a similar phenomenon is found elsewhere you know, at other sites where they are linking the artwork with the solstice. Do we know what the, the is it art for art's sake or are there messages in this do we think? There are definitely messages but I think the messages can't just be read by saying that's a spiral so it looks like the water running around in circles or something like that. I think it's far more complex than that. These were complex people, sophisticated people, abstract in their thinking and enigmatic as well. But we often can link the art with other parts of the symbolism in these sites. Uh, and for example, over at Nauth, uh, you will find that uh, the art is linked with the, not just the sunrise and sunset, but more with the way the sun moves around the site during the course of the day. So that the longest stretch of undecorated stones at Nauth occurs on the northern side of the mound. And in the same way down at Knock Rowan County Kilkenny, again, the undecorated stones tend to occur on the northern side of the mound. So there is this linkage with the sun uh, and particularly through these vertical lines with the uh, solstice itself. How would they have made these patterns? I mean, were they, it, w it must have taken quite a, an amount of time to do it, or would they have been skilled stone workers whose sole job was to do this? It's a very good point. Um, I, I think there are different people at work. You know, some of this is, you could say in technical terms, is quite unsophisticated, but may actually be very complex in what it's intended to convey. Uh, in other cases, as in this stone, for example, um, this is a very fine piece of craftsmanship. Um, the lines are very well made, are very nicely cut into the stone. Uh, and even the design itself can be quite nice, as you can see here. You know, this is quite a, uh, an integrated design, as of course is the famous entrance stone at Newgrange, the most famous uh, piece of megalithic art probably in all of Europe. Um, so you had a difference, there's no doubt, between different craftsmen, I think, and different artists.